Scrum Masters, welcome to the facilitation overview. This is the first of three main lectures in this section. Let's begin with a review of where we are now. In section two, you created your Scrum Master mental model. It starts off with your mental model, a set of beliefs, images, thoughts, emotions that you have. These drive your actions, and all of your actions have intended and unintended consequences. In section three, you constructed your daily rhythm, weekly rhythm, and monthly rhythm. So here's what we're going to do in this section. We're going to answer the question, how do you facilitate the planning meeting and the retrospective meeting? So the outcome of this section is you will know exactly how to facilitate these meetings, and you will learn how to contribute to meetings in which you are not a facilitator. We call that guerrilla facilitation. So for this section, you'll be creating two checklists, one for the planning meeting and another one for the retrospective meeting. So as an example, your planning meeting, you'll say you're gonna calculate the empirical velocity before the meeting, you'll review the top of the product backlog with the product owner, you'll prepare materials. All of those things are things that you will do before the meeting. There will be things that you'll do during the meeting and things that you'll do after the meeting. All of that information will be in your checklist. Same thing goes for the retrospective meeting. You'll select your retrospective technique, you'll bring the action plan from the previous meeting, you'll prepare me your materials. All of that happens before the meeting. There'll be things on your checklist that you'll do during the meeting and things on your checklist that you'll do after the meeting. So today's video is about general facilitation, things that apply to all meetings, and there's a specific video about the planning meeting facilitation and another video for the retrospective meeting facilitation. So here's the goal for this video. You'll learn about what you do as a facilitator in any meeting. You'll learn the PTAS technique, which stands for Purpose, Time, Agenda, and Summary. PTAS is a method that can be applied to any meeting. And you'll learn how to be a guerrilla facilitator. How do you facilitate in meetings in which you're not the official facilitator? So let's get started. The goals of the facilitator in any meeting are to be responsible for the structure of the meeting, not the content. A facilitator's goal is to create a structure which supports the group's best thinking, discussion, and discovery. A facilitator is neutral with respect to content, but you do not allow the group to get sloppy. You don't allow the group to engage in groupthink. You don't allow one person to dominate. You don't allow a manager to shut other people up. You create an environment in which all of the content can be heard. So if you hear a situation in which people are making assumptions that haven't been tested, even though that has to do with content, as part of the structure, you need to question that. And finally, facilitators record in writing the key points of what the group decides or shares. I'm a huge fan of using easel pads and making this information visible to everyone at the meeting. Here are some of the characteristics of a great meeting. The participants understand the purpose of the meeting. They understand why they are at the meeting. They understand why the meeting is taking place. They engage in open, safe dialogue. They understand what decisions were made and what key information was shared. So as the facilitator of a meeting, you're responsible for creating a structure that supports the participants in meeting all of these goals. Dysfunctional behavior is addressed clearly and effectively with all parties believing that they have been heard and understood. So this is one of your responsibilities as the facilitator to address dysfunctional behavior and do not allow the meeting to get sabotaged by any person. So let's get now to the PTAS technique. PTAS is a structured technique for facilitating a meeting. And the meeting is run like a mini sprint with planning up front and a review at the end. So let's drill into that. P stands for purpose. What is the purpose of this meeting? That's typically one or two sentences long. Time. How much time is allocated to the meeting? Will anyone be arriving late or leaving early? I strongly urge you to focus on this, particularly for long meetings. Agenda. What are the agenda items? For each item, is the goal to make a decision or to share information. A 
approximately how much time will be dedicated to each item. Those three things, the purpose, time, and agenda, are done at the very beginning of the meeting. The summary happens at the end of the meeting. At the end of the meeting, you need to review the key items with all participants, and you need to capture information and in any decisions that were made. Let's talk about timing. The purpose, time, and agenda will take five minutes at the beginning of the meeting if everything is prepared and everyone is in agreement. Of course, if people don't agree on what the purpose of the meeting is, it's going to take longer, possibly a lot longer. Do not start any meeting if there isn't agreement on the purpose or agreement on the agenda. Finally, the summary happens at the end of the meeting, and I suggest that you reserve five minutes for every 25 minutes of the meeting. So for a meeting that starts at 10 a.m. and ends at 11 a.m., the last 10 minutes will be devoted to the summary. Again, I recommend that you do not shortchange a meeting by cutting the 10 minutes down to five minutes. Very often, people will disagree about what was decided at the meeting or the key information that was shared. So it's very important to set aside that time. So let's do an example. Here's for a meeting that I recently had. The purpose of the meeting was to share information about logistics for an upcoming trip. The time was 30 minutes and everyone was available throughout the meeting. The agenda, we started off with the opening at which we covered the purpose, time, and agenda for five minutes. Then we talked about getting together on March 24th, that also lasted five minutes. There was 10 minutes on conference strategy and 10 minutes on our mini trip to Seattle. And then we ended with a summary of five minutes. So we did all of that purpose, time, and agenda at the very beginning during the opening of the meeting. And then at the end, we spent five minutes summarizing. And here was our summary. We'll exchange phone numbers on March 24th. We plan to meet in Atherton on March 24th at 3 p.m. We plan to schedule a meeting with XYZ during the conference. And we have a trip to Seattle from April 7th to 10th. So this is exactly how it will look like when you write it down. Now, once you have the basic PCAS structure in place, there are many, many options that you can use to extend and improve the meeting. Use these when you think that they're necessary. A burn down chart. So you're familiar with burn down charts from sprints and from release planning. You can do the same thing for a particular meeting. Since you have the meeting agenda associated times for each agenda item, you can create a burn down chart and update it after each meeting item is completed. An agenda backlog. Particularly for long meetings, people may want to add items, modify items, delete items throughout the meeting. So create an agenda backlog and schedule time to reprioritize. A parking lot. It's a place to note down items which are of interest to participants but are outside of the meeting's purpose. Create a parking lot if a meeting is getting derailed. Roles. Define the roles that people will play in the meeting. Who is the facilitator? That's probably you, but it may not be. Is there a decision maker? Who is a chicken? Who is a pig? And finally, group norms. Will cell phones be turned on or on, vibrate? Can multiple people speak at once? Are side conversations allowed? Now let's talk about guerrilla facilitation. What do you do in a meeting if you're not the facilitator and the facilitator is not facilitating? That's what guerrilla facilitation is about. This is a wonderful way to serve your organization. You are being a servant leader when you engage in guerrilla facilitation. Meeting participants will notice and thank you for contributing to more effective meetings. The overall strategy when you're a guerrilla facilitator is to ask about key tasks. So here's an example. If there's no clearly stated meeting purpose, say, I'm not quite sure what the overall purpose of this meeting is. Can we summarize it in a sentence or two? If the time commitment for the meeting has not been stated, ask, is everyone here for the entirety of the meeting? Will anyone be joining us later? When does the meeting end? If there is no agenda for the meeting, say, can we take a few minutes to write down the agenda for the meeting? If no one is creating a summary, offer to take notes. Ideally, use an easel pad or whiteboard so everyone can see it. So that's the basic idea of being a guerrilla facilitator. Fill in key tasks if the meeting facilitator is not doing it. So here are some other ideas. If the discussion is wandering, offer to create a parking lot. These are important issues, but they are not part of our agenda. Can I create a parking lot? 
that there's no measure of meeting progress offered to create a burn down chart. I'm concerned that we are not going to get through all of the items on the agenda. I'd like to create a chart that tracks our progress through the agenda. If an agenda item has not been identified as a decision or information sharing goal, ask, is our goal with this item to reach a decision in this meeting or is our goal to share information? So here's what you need to do next. Watch the remaining videos over the next couple of days. As I said, there are two key videos, one on planning facilitation and the other one on retrospective facilitation. So those two videos, along with this video, the focus is day one and day two. And then do the three assignments over the next five days. That's day three to seven. And as always, ask questions in the question area, the monthly call, or the one-on-one -on -one coaching session. So let's summarize. You have learned about the materials that you need for a session and how a facilitator thinks about facilitating a meeting. You have learned the PTAS method, and you have learned how to contribute to your organization by being a guerrilla facilitator. Enjoy the next two videos in this section.